Hello booktube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you, hope you're well, hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing. Hello. How the cheekiness are you? Long time no see. Angela Glover said, please come back Louise. You're my favourite person to listen to talk to about books and crochet. Well, Angela, that is such a lovely comment. I thought I have to respond to that. And also, Son Federman, I'm going with that, So, do you have two fun channels? Where have you disappeared to again? Oh, and that just sounded so disappointed. <laughs> disappointed, concerned, but, you know, disappointed with me. And I just thought, Son, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I have disappeared again. I have disappeared and I just thought, no, I'm going back. And the thing is about it, when you go away, you kind of don't anticipate going away for so long and then things happen. But then on a day where you put the washing out, you hang out the washing, you peg out. You peg out in the beautiful sunshine, although I need to go and t take them in because it's less sunny. You put the clothes out. In fact, it probably was about October when I did my last videos. And I was putting the washing out, maybe in November. I reckon we did a couple of cheeky days in November, but yeah, here I am. Have I just come back to talk to you about laundry? No, but I have to mention it. The fact it is today, I did put it out. I thought I'm going to have to tell Booktube. I could just take a picture of it and put it on, on Instagram, but then I thought, no, I need to go and tell my old Friday Reads pals that the washing is on the line. Yay! That means spring must be must be in the air yeah so yeah hey how have you been we've we've um we've had a bit of a, a bit of a time of it of course uh like many people um i we had a family member that became quite poorly and needed to to be supported i mean not one of the three of us but a very close family member so the husband was spending quite a lot of time away supporting um, I think that's going to be more of a long-term thing that we're going to have to kind of factor in. I think there's some of that going to going to happen, as these things do. Um, so that was a concern. And I've had COVID. I had COVID in in November. I don't think I really, really got fl flying again. Um, back on full cylinders. So I had a week off in January. And yeah, the first week of January I had it off and I think that was the week that I actually kicked the um, cough. Oh my word, kicked that away. That was, that had been going. I'm also deeply menopausal. I'm a menopause, menopausal woman. Yep, yep indeed. Uh, gosh, and I didn't realise until I sat down and I'm staring at myself. I'm not staring at myself, I'm staring at you. Until I was staring at the, the, the myself going, wow, I look pale and super, super grey. It's, it's only when you actually look at yourself like this that you go, wow, I've been using a different shampoo. And, and that's really bringing out the natural silver that I, I have. My uh, lovely silver, but it is unfortunately making me look like need a bit of colour. That's what my mum used to do. Print your cheeks, get some colour in. Um, yeah, that's probably, it. oh I've started a new job, so I'm now in two hospitals, not just in the one. So a little bit of a promotion, um, and that's been kicking my butt as well, as a brand new job when you're a menopausal woman, well that's a lot to deal with. Let me tell you. Um, so that's been going. What else has been going? We've had lots of stuff going on. Upstairs is the lad who is 14, nearly 15. You'll all remember him as a little boy, but no, he's a grown ass hairy person now. And yeah, he is teenage. Wow. Uh, it's quite a thing, isn't it? Being a, being a teenager. We have a lot of sighs and a lot of eye rolls and a lot of kind of glares, but he is brilliant. I won't have a word said against him. He is doing his thing. 
splendidly. We're doing everything we can to support him. Um, what else? Yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of reading. I did a lot of audio book listening. Been doing a lot of reading with my ears. I have done a little bit of reading here and there. I've been more involved in other things, so finding audiobooks really handy because I'm doing other stuff and so I can listen and so I get my fix that way. I want to dive back into some physical books again and this will inspire me. This will inspire me because I'll want to talk to you about them. So let's crack in on the old books. Grab yourself a drink, maybe a cup of tea, maybe a cheeky glass of water like I've got. Hey, it's later in the day, maybe a maybe a lovely Horlicks. Um, and let's talk about books. Let's talk about books, baby. Let's talk about books, baby. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that we read. Let's talk about books. Let's talk about books. Yeah, so um, Patricia Wentworth. Now, I may well have shown you these before. Last year, I listened to and read with my eyes probably 20, 22, 25 Patricia Wentworths. I had a cracking year with Patricia Wentworth. I think she tied with Agatha, Agatha Christie, for those that don't know. I think she tied with Agatha with the amount of, for my favourite author of the year. Um, I think in total I read about 90 books last year. I think it was about 90, which makes it sound ridiculous when I feel like it wasn't a good reading year. Crazy. Crazy how we think about these things. But I didn't feel, I felt a, a lot of those were audio books. I mean, not 90. Wouldn't have got anything else done. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I did read them as well, but I did do a lot of reading, a lot of reading audiobooks in the car or when I was out doing stuff or in here doing stuff. But Patricia Wentworth, I really like the Diana Bishop uh, narrated ones. So I think I listened to this one. I know I listened to this one. I, I think I, may, I can't remember if I listened to or I read this one. This is The Silent Pool. What's hilarious is I don't think that that's what the character looks like. That was quite a good one. That was quite a good one, actually. The Silent Pool. Some of them are better than others. And this one, the Benevent, Benevent Treasure, I'm sure I probably did show you this because I think this was it from August. I just picked up a couple so that I had a couple of Patricia Wentworths to show you. But... Um, yeah, this was one of the best. Ooh, there is one evil character in this. She can write a crackingly evil character. Can uh, Patricia? So these are Miss Silver Mysteries. I don't know whether Patricia, Patricia Wentworth actually wrote anything that wasn't Miss Silver. She wrote, she wrote, I think, 35. So I have read most of them last year. And I'll be very sad when there are none left. Um, yeah, so some of them I think are better than others. Some of them have have strong echoes of other ones. I have just finished the Allington Inheritance. And I listened to that on Audible, not Spawn, um, and that wasn't one of the best. It was interesting, but it wasn't one of the best. It's not one I would recommend. I would recommend The Silent Pool and I would recommend Benevent Treasure if you're interested in starting them. I like the ones where it's quite heavily Miss Silver and uh, both of those are quite heavily, have got Miss Silver in quite heavily, so that's really good. So that's kind of um, Golden Age, Cozy Crime, completely clean if you are somebody that doesn't like any um, curse words or any um, physical shenanigans, then they are completely clean. They do have an element of romance in them, but it is, as I say, completely clean. So that if you're interested in that kind of thing. I really like them for the mystery and the way that they talk about the 1920s and the 1930s. They are very set in their period. That's when they were written. They feel that they were written there, but it's still, they're really good tales. So 
I love Patricia Wentworth. As I said, I did read a lot of Agatha's last year, probably 20, 25, something like that. Um, and I got this for Christmas. Yes, yes, I know, I know, friends. This isn't a book, but I have to show you it. I got, oh, Agatha Christie bingo. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is the, you know, the range they do, you can get cat bingo and dog bingo and bug bingo, which looks excellent. This, deeply fascinating. It's just beautiful, this edition of uh, Agatha Christie bingo. Let me show you the back and you get to see the kind of, the gorgeousness that you end up looking at. It's really brilliant. It's so visually beautiful, just beautiful. It's a good bingo game anyway. It's bingo's bingo, but I have we did play that a lot at Christmas. In fact, I need to get the 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 lad and the and his dad back in the lounge and we can have a game of bingo. Not at the moment, we've got a lot going on this week, but maybe next week. Actually, no, maybe next not next week, but at some point we will. Um, so these are some books I haven't read. Actually, one of them I started. This one I'll talk about because I've started it. Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukafka. Kukafka, yeah, Kukafka is how I'm pronouncing it. Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukafka. Best-selling author of Girl in Snow no idea what about. This is Ansel Packer is scheduled to die in 12 hours but this is not his story. Ansel doesn't want to die, he wants to be celebrated, understood, yet now he awaits the same fate he forced on those girls years ago. This is a story of the women who survive. Um, so it's a serial killer on death row. I started reading it, I got to page um 50 in two sittings come on the only thing is it has not the nicest feel and i wasn't somewhere i wanted more easy not easy because this was easy to read i wanted I didn't, I didn't want to be challenged i didn't want it to be the you know that kind of kind of mean characters or nasty characters i just wasn't in the mood for that when i st i started reading this and so i've put it aside but i am going to continue it because i am interested in it and it's very well written but i didn't want to deal with the nastiness of the characters because ansel parker is not a nice character and there were other not nice characters and some days i'm not in the mood for not nice characters some days I want to spend my time with people I like. <laughs> Just the way I am. Um, I love these editions. This is the British... This is the British Library editions. These are reprints of classic crimes. Or classic, you know... So, so British Library crime classics is what they are. Somebody at the door. They always have gorgeous covers. So, yeah. So that is just one that I've got to read. I have a whole collection of them, which I need to read. I bought this one. I kind of a bit late to the um, late to the party with this one. I think the world and his wife has read this. Apart from me, this is Daisy Jones and the Six. I have read the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I enjoyed it. I didn't. I know a lot of people think it is marvelous, but I didn't feel like that. Um. But this, I thought, sounded quite fun. 1979. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it sounded kind of fun. I'm sure you know all about it. It is. Everyone, um, everybody knows Daisy, Six, Daisy Jones and the Six. Their sound defined an era. Their albums were on every turntable. They sold out arenas from coast to coast. Then on 12th of July 1979, Daisy Jones walked barefoot onto the stage at the Whiskey and then it all came crashing down. Everyone was there. Everyone remembers it differently. Nobody knew why they split until now. So I thought that sounded quite fun. I do like books like that. I like books that are set in a time and it's a remembered an event and different pieces. And put. And I thought that quite, was quite fun. I did think that Taylor Jenkins Reid could write a good book and could keep you interested. So... That's a book that I'm looking forward to having a go. This is a book I know absolutely nothing about. 
it was lent to me by a friend she really enjoyed it the bed i made by lucy whitehouse i've just seen on the back it says a post do morio domestic gothic thriller in the maggie o'farrell sophie hannah mode wow they're evoking a lot of people there aren't they in one sentence uh, when Kate meets dark, enigmatic Richard in a Soho bar, she barely hesitates before going home with him. Scandalous. Hussy! He is undeniably attractive. And dangerous. Now, 18 exhilarating but fraught months later, Kate finishes their relationship. Go! And hopes that will be the end of it. But it is only the beginning. Oh. Fleeing London for the wintry Isle of Wight, she's determined to ignore the flood of calls and emails, but what begins as a nuisance becomes ever more becomes an ever more threatening game of cat and mouse. That actually does actually sound quite good. <laughs> now I've read the back of it. Probably should have read the back of it beforehand. But I was like, she's like, oh, here you are, read this. And I was like, okay. I'm very obedient. <laughs> read this. Okay. So that's, that's going to go further up the pile now, actually. This is my current read. Now, I'm quite annoyed at myself with this because um, when I pick it up and start reading it, I really like it. And what I'm not doing is is making the time. So the last couple of days at work, I'm filming this on the Wednesday, which is the day I'll upload it. Upload it. Um, I've been taking it at lunchtime because normally I knit or I crochet when listening to a podcast or an audio book. But I have been taking that I've made so I've made a point of just taking my book and just sitting there and reading it for 20-25 minutes and I've not wanted to go back to my desk because I've wanted to carry on reading but then you see last night I didn't read which I should have done um and I haven't read today and I could have done but yeah I shall make time I shall make time maybe I'm gonna have a bath have a bubble bath be that woman be that woman uh yes the atlas six by olive blake six are chosen only five will walk away knowledge is carnage do you know what i love about that cover a it's kind of glittery and mysterious but b there are no quotes there's no uh, quotes on the back but i can cope with that no quotes no quotes that's the way to do it. I gather this is a series because it's got a picture of the Atlas Paradox. So that must be the second in the book. Um, it's magical. Six extraordinary magicians, five chances to win one secret society. So do you like magicians? Do you like secret societies? Do you like kind of a challenge, a test? Are those books, are those the kind of books that would be interesting for you? They are for me. So there we go. Um, I am up to page 76 and it's great. So I'm really enjoying this one. Will I carry on enjoying it? I don't know. Let's have a look at the how many pages they are without spoiling myself. 556. So that's a good size book to get me back into reading. I am enjoying it, so yeah. Maybe I'll then read the Lucy Whitehouse because that'll be a completely different one. Who knows, I'll probably read another Miss Silver. <laughs> um, and then this is uh, a book that we have the husband bought. I don't know where he heard of such a person, but he did. Um, and we've had quite a few meals out of it recently and are really enjoying it. Board of Lunch, The Healthy Slow Cooker Book by Nathan Anthony. There are a lot of these kind of, um, these kind of like healthy, um, quick, but these are not quick because they're slow cooker ones. But it doesn't actually seem to take too much prep from because the husband is, is doing them. Um, but they are really delicious. I can't remember. We've had the chicken korma out of it um what else have we had i don't know what else we've had out of it actually we've had a beef one what have we we've had irish beef stew yum i will agree that was lovely have we had more that i think we've had a couple of chicken ones um chicken and peanut curry have we had that 
that sounds nice. There was a black pepper one. Not doing a very good job of um there was a black pepper one, I'm sure. That was nice. Irish stew with beef and Guinness. I don't know if we've had the spaghetti bolognese. I think we have. The beef bourguignon is ringing a bell. Trying to look about the chicken, the black. I thought it was black pepper. Anyway, I don't know which one it was, but that was really nice. And then we had it and he and the, the husband tweaked it. That was that was delicious. So, yeah. So these have been really, we've really liked those. We've had it about a month. And I think we've had probably six, five or six meals out of it already, which is pretty good going for a cookbook. I've got a lot of cookbooks here that we've not had a single meal out of. <laughs> Although I have enjoyed reading them. We've not had a single meal out of them, but this has been worth it. So I just thought I'd show you that. Quite interesting. But yeah, there we go. There we go, friends. Let's do the obligatory stack of books. There we are. I'm back. And I'm not going to go away again. Let's let's just agree. We'll just get through whatever life throws at us together. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you're all right. So this is the... <laughs> Poor Dafty. <laughs> Has it been a while? Yes. <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? No. <laughs> I could say that about a lot of my life. <laughs> I just hope nobody from work's watching this. <laughs> of course I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, so there's the obligatory stack and the cookbook as well. But yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, I'll come back after I've read that one, definitely. And I think we'll go for Lucy next, although I'm quite, one of those, probably. Throw in a, a Miss Silver along the way. I'm re-listening to a Miss Silver currently, just as a bit of a comfort one before I leap into my new audiobook. But I'm not going to tell you what that is until I see you next time. And let's hope it is another sunny day and we can I can look at my yet more washing drying on the line. Well, Booktube, this has been lovely. Let's do it again. Bye.